So here we are back to a more normal view. Let's um, look at what we've accomplished so far by turning it into profile. And um, you'll notice here some of the features on the right side of your screen that are most evident is again reviewing, excuse me while I pass in front here, reviewing that the overlap of the upper lip to the lower lip, you see that is out, this is in, the chin is slightly recessed, we can make that a stronger chin later, and then the area in the maxilla is more frontal, see, and then we have the nose, nose going back to the head, you'll notice that the eyes, the top eyelid is more pronounced than the lower eyelid, and perhaps you can see it, but there is a slight slant of the eyeball. That is the direction that you want to think of. It's more or, less, more or less parallel to this line right here. So that's a slant. That would mean that the lower eyelid, like the lower lip, is behind the upper eyelid. I think you can see that. Now one of the most pronounced features of a male head as opposed to a female head, let's see how, how I can get this into center for you, is uh, the angle of the forehead to the nose. Um, this, this head at the moment has more of a female appearance to it because that angle could be closer to the angle of the nose here. So I'm going to shave off some of this clay to give it a more male or simian like appearance. Uh, any woman would understand why a man looks more like an ape than a, than a man, but this is rather simian in that the head of an ape is also very sloping. So as we get that characteristic into this particular head, we're adding a male feature. That's the beginning of it. We'll come back to that. Now, we're back in profile here, as you can plainly see. And one of the things I want to do is um, proceed on to the next portion of our demonstration, which has to do with the location of the, of the ear. But before I do that, I want to give myself an area for the ear, which I will explain in a moment will be more or less in this region. And also, a more delineated angle of the mandibula, the mandible, the jawline. All right. Now, the break in the jaw, that is this angle here to this angle over here, should be in alignment with the mouth. Now, if I take that parallel line right across the mouth, you would see that it really should be slightly lower, and uh, that would square up the chin somewhat. So that's just a little indicator, a reminder to me. Ears um, will range in size, but most typically if we draw a parallel line from the eyebrow right here and the bottom of the nose, we make it parallel like that. It's a horizontal line, I should say. The parallel line is the one below it that lines up with the nose. Now that will tell you approximately where the top and the bottom of the ear are going to be. The zygomus, the zygomatic arch, is located approximately right about here. Um, if we were to carve out some stuff in here, I, I'm going to show that to you, but just that I'm placing it there right now, to tell you that if you remember Mr. Goldfinger's sculpture, you'll remember that right over here is the auditory uh, canal. And right behind that is a little bump, which you can reach behind your ear and actually feel this on yourself. It's very pronounced. That's the uh, mastoid bone. And that will play in to uh, a later part of our demonstration. The ear is at an angle. So 
our ears are not straight across the back of our head, but they're rather cocked. And also they are behind the jawline. So I want you to think in these terms of creating a rectangle like that and recognizing that the ear is going to fall somewhere within those parameters. So I'm going to take a nice big fleshy part of clay and place it right about here, putting it into place. Top of the ear, pressing it in from behind, you see there is the jaw, there is the jaw right here, the process of the ear is right behind it. The other factor that is of tremendous importance, and let's see if we can turn this around enough, is to see how the ear stands off the, the head. That there is this protuberance of cartilage, and you can see this also on the inside of the ear because the cartridge wall is extremely thin and extremely flexible. It is uh, one of the more flexible uh, examples of cartilage in the body. And cartilage, as you more than likely know, is uh, the same material as bone. It just has not calcified to the point that bone has. So here we are coming back and I'm not going to take you through every step of this because that's a, a lecture in and of itself. So that too, I'm going to do a little bit of that off camera and then we'll come back to it. Now we are, <clears throat> we are running short on time and because of that, I'm going to leap ahead. Here's a rough of the ear, and this again is to show you just how pronounced that is, how it sticks out from the back. And as you can see, I put an ear on the other side as well, just to even things out. But I think you can see the development of a personality. And there are a few things now I'm going to do to emphasize the personality of the piece, and you'll see that in quick jump cuts. Now here I've emphasized the chin, and I've carved away a little bit underneath the zygomatic arch, and a little bit above it, that is to emphasize the strength of the face. And here you can see a slight bulge is left behind, that is the masseter muscle. And as we turn here, a little bit has been carved away on this side to make the face stronger. And you can see very clearly, because I've emphasized it with counter strokes, that there are planes in the forehead. You'll see in the front view that this is one plane here, another plane here and here, and then finally the last plane to the side of the head. No plane is actually perpendicular to the other. Uh, so let's see what else have we done here. We well, can see the ear and the next step will be to emphasize some of the points of hair. Well here's our imaginary friend now fully coiffed. You can see the addition of the eyebrows and the hair give a tremendous amount of personality and identity to the figure. One of the things that's of critical importance in sculpting is always leave the hair for the very, very last thing that you're going to do. And the reason for that is that whether you're a painter or a sculptor, the identity of, human, the identity, excuse me, of a human being uh, stays pretty much the same throughout their life, no matter how much the facial features change, the skull, the foundation of the bone, remains pretty much the same. So these are the last things that give the most amount of identity to a human being is that that hair is going to go on top of a scalp, on top of a, a cranium that is already going to be what that individual is. And this is the last and most identifiable part of a head. Well, there we are. It's a, a rather quick demonstration. It's a, it's a very complex subject that we're dealing with. 
today, so we've done it as quickly as we can for you. So I hope you've enjoyed this. I, I hope you've learned something from it. God knows I have. And I just want to, uh, in wrapping up, give uh, special thanks to our camera operators, both Penny Meyer, now back in Las Vegas, and Richard Stalter, not to mention Bill Merklein, who apparently had two jobs of being in front of the camera and behind the camera. Also, a special thank you to Gary Head and all those kids who love G.I. Joes who really have inspired this uh, demonstration for your edification. Thank you. Until we see each other again, I'm Bill Merklein. Take care.